Seth Godin, it's January 2012. What do you hope you will have shipped in 2011? The scary thing I'm working on right now is launching the Domino Project, which is a new publishing venture that's trying to reinvent the very nature of what we think of when we think of publishing a book. The books will look like books, hardcover, uh, e-books, audio books. That part isn't changing so much. But what's changing is this nature of how do you make a book spreadable? Because right now books are work overtime to not be spreadable. They're very hard to share. They're very hard to talk about. They don't connect to the digital world. What happens if I do something like sell you a five pack of a book for not much more than it would cost to buy two copies? If you get five copies of a book that you believe in, that you love, aren't you going to give four of them away? Now a traditional book publisher could never do that. Barnes & Noble couldn't think about how to do that. But because uh, we're powered by Amazon and we don't have to worry about uh, getting ripped off on the returns and because we know who's interested in buying multiple copies, we can go directly to those people and give them this tool. Or what happens if uh, instead of saying a Kindle book costs 10 bucks, we can say, you know, for a little bit of time, go share it to lots and lots of people. And then we'll turn around and figure out if we can make money from it. Because if we can make it so that these books spread, that's the real problem. You know, a as Tim O'Reilly said, the enemy is not piracy. The enemy is obscurity. And what we're trying to do is, is eliminate the obscurity problem for authors. So my goal by the end of the year is that we will have shipped a bunch of books, I don't know if it's 10 or 50, that will change the way people think about ideas, that will make it easier for them to spread the, those ideas, and that will make authors go back to their traditional publishers and say, we need to fix this system because books are too important to waste on a broken model. You're subverting the traditional publishing business with this. Yes, I've been subverting publishing for 20 years since I became a book packager. Uh, I love books, I love their power, I've never been crazy about the economics of the system. So all along, I've been trying to sort of poke around the edges and change it. Books in milk cartons, books where you can get the ebook online for free, books where um, you know we're, we try to, to create a book online and then move it to the internet and then into a book. All of these things have been consistent that I've been trying to do. And then Amazon comes along and says, here, blank sheet of paper. So they're calling my bluff. And that's why we're trying to big dream, dream big dream. You're working directly with authors on this thing? We are. And we haven't announced the other authors yet. I, I'll tell You're you. You're doing your own book, your next your, book. My next it. book will be out uh, March 1st. And then right after that, the book we'll do uh, after that is uh, by a guy named Ralph Waldo Emerson. But he's dead. Mm. You got him signed up? Yeah. You sold him? His agent was tough, but we worked it he out. He was on that canoe trip, right? Exactly. Uh, and what's your next book about? My next book is about initiative. It's about the thing that's missing from uh, the equation. Uh, that we, we have the factories, we have the money, we have the employees, we have the technology. You can put all that in a room and still nothing happens. What uh, is the biggest challenge in the Domino Project? What will make it a success, do you think, or what might not make it a success? The biggest challenge is the same challenge in almost all tech startups face, which is can you dream big enough? Uh, can you do something that's worth doing as opposed to just holding back a little bit and play it safe. Because we know safe sort of works. Safe is out there already. And you don't want to go too far and be too crazy because that doesn't work either. So it's that magic zone in between you know, going all the way and, and blowing people away or not going quite far enough. And that's where we're going to try to be. And the key element is when we get the first 10,000 people to hold the first book, will they feel an overwhelming urge to share it. Because if they don't share it, this doesn't work. And if they do share it, it does. You've made your name in part by the success you've had as, a, as an author through the traditional business. Uh, your, your readers, your followers will get the next Seth book uh, on the Domino platform. Will that be a better book? Will it be a different book from the ones they're used to from, from Penguin, who traditionally publish your book? Well, you know, better is always such a problem. Better to who? You well, know, better to them. I mean, is it going to be a different reading experience when they pick it up? Will they say, is this a, a Seth Godin book or is this something different? Well, I can tell you that it sounds like me, right? The interesting question is, we know that almost everyone in the United States reads no books. The typical American buys one book a year. 
that when a book succeeds, you know, Dan Brown or Malcolm Gladwell, it is the one book that those people bought this year. So if you want to break through, what you have to do is write a book that will be read by people who will read no other book this year. Now that means the people who love books, who read a book a week, or like me, a book every two days, it might not match their expectation of what a book book is. So part of what we're doing with these manifestos is they're shorter, they're faster, they're more urgent. Because a manifesto is the kind of thing that you can hand to a coworker who doesn't read books and say, you got to read this thing. Whereas if I hand somebody a copy of one of my older books or one of your books, they may say six pages in, this is too dense for me. So part of what we're trying to do with these manifestos is say, look, we don't care how long it is. Make it as short as it can possibly be to have the impact. Whereas a traditional book publisher says, wait, we can't sell a book that's 96 pages long because people won't feel like they got their money's worth. And that dichotomy of how you create a book becomes important when you think about what books you ought to do next. I don't think Moby Dick would work in the format that we're trying to do.